Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Yiming, and this is Zai Feng. This is uh, Qi Tian. Uh, we are from 360 Network Security Research Lab. And today we are going to talk about uh, how we use our massive PDNS data to do real-time uh, DJ uh, malicious domain uh, traffic analysis. Uh, first, some quick facts. Uh, currently, we provide our DJ data feed at this URL. Uh, that DGA feed updates every day, uh, once every day, and uh, that's a TXT file, actually. The file itself is about 70 mega big. Um, it has more than 1 million DNS uh, entry in that file, so uh, it's a fairly large uh, uh, DNS blacklist, actually. And in our feed, we're tracking uh, right now 38 DGA families with 375 DGA variants. And uh, our DNS platform, uh, on average, we see more than 5 million DNS queries looking up for those malicious DGA domains, which means these DGA family are, fa are still fairly active. Uh, right now, we have subscribers from more than uh, 50 countries pulling the data. The feed itself is free. Uh, you are welcome to use it however you want. There is no charge for that. And actually, if you go to our website, we have more free service to the security community. For example, we run a DDoS mount. Uh, DDoS, DDoS mount. Uh, it's basically a DDoS monitoring traffic uh, project. It's also free. We also, we also have scan mount, which tracks uh, network-wide uh, backbone scan traffic. We also have some other uh, open data. So you guys are welcome to go there and take a look. Uh, today, I'm going to go through some background information first. Then Zai Feng is going to take over. He will talk about how we start from the raw PDNS data and from the data to narrow down to a highly suspicious DJ domain list. Then Chi Char will talk about how we pair those highly suspicious DJ domains to real mirror sample in our sandbox. We probably don't have enough time to talk about block blocking experience, but we'll see. Uh, we all know most uh, malwares, they, have, they need to have some kind of mechanism to talk to with uh, their C2s, command controllers. Uh, most malwares these days, they use hard-coded C2s. Uh, by hard-coded, we mean it's either a fixed IP address or a DNS name. Here, a very, very good example is a WannaCry. We all know this year, uh, in May this year, WannaCry made some really serious damage. I think in just in one day, uh, that ransomware uh, infected more than 200,000 uh, uh, computers, and uh, more than 100 countries will, uh, have, will have infection. Uh, if we take a look at the source code of the binary code of WannaCry, we can see that uh, kill switch domain there. Uh, it's clear text. It's not encrypted, so everybody can see right in the spot that there, there's something going on with that domain. And I guess that's why it only takes a few hours after the code got released for a security researcher to figure out this is a Q switch domain and register it, then single it. If WannaCry author didn't use, uh, did use uh, like a DGA, it might take security researcher maybe days to figure out what the real C2 is gonna be. So uh, DGA, DGA stands for Domain Generation Algorithm. So basically, by using DGA, that means the C2 is not hard-coded anymore. And the C2 are generated by the malware's own algorithm. And normally, when we're talking about C2 here, we're talking about just not just one C2. Malware can generate a whole bunch of C2s and only pick one to register it, and um, that malware will work. A good example here, I'm not sure if that's clear enough uh, for, you, for you guys to take a look, but this is a DGA domain generated by a malware uh, called um, NACAS. On the uh, this uh, DGA botnet will generate 2,048 uh, domains every three days. That's a long list. 
And on the left side, you can see that's a domain, some of the domain is generated on November 21. On the right side, some other domains it generated on November 24. So if you take a close look, you will notice a few things. First, uh, most of the domains have this return code, error code E3. In DNS, that means NX domain. Domains not existed. Basically, the malware author didn't register these domains. But also, uh, see the red marked one? Um, on both diagrams, you can see there's one live DJ domain and got registered and was a SAN IP. There's also another thing. Uh, if you take a look at the TLP, a TLD, you will see that the TLD is just all over the place. For example, we have uh, .ga, .bs, uh, .taiwan, .us, .russia, .japan. So let's see, if you're a secure researcher and you want to register and single all these domains, it's going to be really difficult because you have to talk with DNS registrar all over the world and also pay a lot of money. Remember, we are saying this botnet will generate 2,048 domains every three days. So that's about the DGA. Another, another piece of this is the passive DNS. For those who are not familiar with passive DNS, uh, you can think it as a kind of D, a DNS database with all the history record. Here, a uh, good example here, uh, uh, nanoc.org. Um, just from the output, you can see some key elements here. For example, the first column is a start, is a first thing time. The second column is the last thing time. Also, we have like hits number, uh, the domain was asking for. Uh, what type of uh, DNS record that is. Here is the A record. And what's the IP address was assigned to the DNS name. For example, the first line here, from uh, late 2014 to earlier this year, Nanog was pointed to, to this 50.31 IP address. And see the second line, from earlier this year to now, Nanog is pointing to this uh, 104 IP address. Uh, another example of PDNS, see here, blnetrad.com. Uh, again, this is only part of the, the whole screenshot. But you can tell that basically these domains changing IP all the time. This is a very typical fast flex domain. Normally, this type of domain is up to no good. It's really safe. It's safe to just kill the domain. So passive DNS has... Uh, very great potential in security community and more and more companies are using, are starting to use it. And that's why we run our own passive DNS system. Uh, it's a passive DNS.cn. And also, if you're a security researcher, you can go there uh, and apply account, it's free. And this, the platform currently covers more than 10% of all, all Chinese DNS traffic. And on average, we see every single second, we see more than 1 million DNS queries per second. And also all together, uh, we have 15 billion plus uh, R sets. And with that, I'm going to give the mic to uh, Tsai Feng. He's going to talk about uh, how he starts from the raw DNS, uh, passive DNS data, and then to narrow down to a high potential uh, uh, DJ candidate list. Uh, there's one thing I have to say that uh, probably is, is pretty obvious, you guys can tell, that we are from a non English speaking country. and, and uh, I believe actually for Cheetar, this is first time ever doing English talk um, ever since his college, college time. That's what, like 20 years ago. Uh, so um, we, we thought about that. So we think maybe it's better they can read from their cell phone note. Cell phone note. Um, I'll make sure they can write, uh, read it slow so it should be easy to understand. Yeah, thanks. OK, thank you. Uh, how to find the high suspicion? Okay, how to find high suspicious uh, DJ domains from passive DNS? Uh, first, uh, we need to get all the daily new domains. Uh, basically, uh, we are only going to focus on uh, new domains uh, that showed up in the last seven days. And uh, domain SLD are on the Alex top uh, 10,000 list will be dropped. We also use uh, some other uh, quick filters 
uh, such as filter, uh, filter out the Wireshark, uh, uh, filter out the Wireshark domains. Uh, as, uh, as a result, instead of, instead of dealing, the, uh, dealing with all the raw data, uh, we only need to work on a million at the start point. Uh, the result uh, of the above step uh, will have some noise. For example, uh, here, mm, big CDN providers such as uh, Akamai and uh, Cloudflare, uh, and all of the uh, all kinds of DNS blacklists uh, such as Spanhouse and uh, SURBL. Okay, some other common cases. Uh, look at the top one. Uh, it looks it uh, it looks really strange, uh, but it's not DGA. Uh, they are disposable domains uh, from the APNIC DNS test. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Ring the bell? Yes. Uh, the the bottom two cases are uh, the bottom two cases are from two DDoS botnet family. The left is Alknot and the right is Mirai. Uh, these domains are used for DDoS attack. They really look like DGA, uh, but actually they are not. Uh, so uh, we have get rid of uh, the obvious noise, and then uh, we are going to uh, go into the most important part here. Uh, to cluster the DGA domains. The theory is pretty simple. DGA domains generated by same mobile family should go together in same group. There are two dimensions can be used. Uh, dimension one, time. When, mo when mobile runs, it, uh, it, will, it will keep asking DGA domains until it finds one that is resolvable. Dimension two, client. Uh, clients infected with the same DGA family should ask for some, some domain names in the same time window. After this step, the amount of, uh, the amount of data uh, we need to focus on is greatly reduced. Okay, uh, let's talk about more details. Uh, we will do time-based uh, time -based clustering and client-based clustering. For time-based clustering, we use, hour, we use one hour time interval to group together all domains accessed by same client. For client-based clustering, it requires four steps. Step one, uh, generate domain name IP matrix uh, named the named A. Uh, step two, calculate the tra transpose matrix of A, named A transpose. Number three, get the domain similarity matrix based on client requests, B equals A uh, multiply A transpose. The greater the value of element of B, uh, IG, uh, the higher the domain name, I and the domain name J coincidence. Uh, last step, use last step using the Luan algorithm for clustering. Uh, we see uh, uh, we we set a threshold, and the algorithm groups the high similarity domain names together, so every domain gets sent into a particular cluster. Let's take a take a look at an example. Okay, this is an example. Uh, this is a diagram of client-based clustering. In matrix A, D means domain, and, uh, I, and IP means client IP. Value one indicates the domain has a DNS query uh, from the corresponding IP. Uh, zero, zero means no query. In this example, we can see that the element value of matrix B is the 
coincidence number of client IPs between two domains. Thus, based on the client dimension, the similarity of D1 and D2, three, three there in the green box, okay, is higher than D1 and D3, one in the yellow box. Okay, then we convert the matrix B into a graph, set a threshold such as three, and only see with the edges with the weight greater than or equal to the threshold only. So the four domains will eventually be grouped into three clusters, D1 and D2, B, uh, D1 and D2 in one same cluster. D3 and D4 are separate, each in its only cluster. Okay, here is what the result looks like. It is still a very long candidate list. Uh, for example, this cluster is a typical DGA domain. domain uh, DGA, DGA domain names. It, it's a configure mobile. The cool thing here is that uh, all the configure domains were successfully grouped together uh, without uh, looking at the configure code. Uh, we don't need we don't reverse engineer it. Okay, uh, that, uh, uh, that looks good now, but again, we are going to see noise. For example, this, this cluster, they really look like DGA, but all of them are actually hard-coded in this mobile, so they are not DGA. You can, you can find the mobile sample uh, through the words total a link. So another example, this cluster, these domains are linked with each other. We call it link farm. Uh, you, can, uh, you can see the right picture. They linked each other together. Um, they are for black hat SEO, uh, use the bump up their search, search ranking. So we are going to apply another layer of rules. We are only select the domains that uh, only consider uh, second, uh, SLD, second level domain and top level domain. And the length of second level domain need to be more than five letters. And uh, every, every domain names, our data has less than five, rec uh, five DNS uh, records. Uh, also, for each cluster, the ratio of DNS uh, negative answers, a negative answer such as uh, no such domain, should be greater than 20%. And uh, total, uh, total DNS domain for each cluster is uh, greater than or equal to four. After this operation, the data reduced to 10,000. Okay. This uh, the result looks much better now. So we are, we are looking at the list about 10,000 high suspicious DGA domain. It is relatively safe to use this list as a potential blacklist, but we want to give it even, for, uh, even further. We will want to uh, pair the DNS domain to mobile samples so we can absolutely sure, and Chi Tian will uh, talk about that. Thank you. Thank you. My job is to pairing the DNS names to M device. We run our own sandbox every day. Uh, we run more than a hundred thousand samples from VT, and even more samples from us in our sandbox. The result is something like this. Uh, you can see on the left side is the M device, and on the right side is the DNS names that M device 
are asking for. For every suspicious demand, there are three pairing possibilities. Uh, first, the demand has a amplified match and is already marked by someone as malicious. Second, the demand has an amplified match, but nobody has marked it. In this case, in this case, we will need to revise reverse engineering. And this is very labor intensive. The third, the demand has no MD5 match. We can do a few things, but there is really not much we can do here. In general, TGA, TGA can be divided into two categories. One is TID, the other is TDD. We will talk TID first. TID stands for time independent and deterministic. Uh, that means the TID DJ will generate same domains all the time when it runs. Here is an example. Uh, Remnant DJ generates exact same domains in January, January and in September. The time is different, but the two lists are exactly the same. Among the 38 DJ families, we know the TID DJ accounts for nearly 30%. We will take limit DJ for example, to show how we locate malware sample in the TID case. Let's look at this cluster. Know the SLD is always within a length of A219 and consists of A2Y, zero, is always missing. TLD is always .com. And with time goes on, uh, the infected clients always query the same FQDNs. So it look like, look like a TID DGA. Searching the domains in our DNS MD5 database, and we got a bunch of MD5. <laughs> Through wise total, we know that this sample was submitted and marked as branded a known DJ family. So the suspicious DJ domains are generated by a new variant of Lambeth DGA we have not identified before. And now, we can mark it successfully. Let's recap. We start from the highly suspicious TID DJ cluster. You use DNS undefined pairs to locate the malware sample, and then reverse engineering and figure out the algorithm. Then we can confidently generate domains of this new variant. Now, let's take a look at TDD DGA. TDD stands for time dependent and deterministic. Uh, that means basically um, TDDJ generates different domains at different time. 
here, running a TDD DJA samples in sandbox in different time. Uh, and we can see the domain list captured by Wireshark is totally different. The good thing is, although the domain names <coughs> change all the time, the domains generated by the same family will share some common pattern because the algorithms share the same logic. So can use fuzzy match later on. Let's take a look at this, look at this table, the first slide where Ruth generate 10,000 domains per day. TLD is alway.com, and SLD is fixed length of six letters, all the way from A to Z. The last one, say cleaner, only generate one domain per month. TLD is alway.com and SLD length is within 11 to 13. Alway use letter A to F and the number 0 to 9. Among 38 DGA families, we know TDD DGA family account for nearly 70%. We will take China D as an example to show how we locate malware sample through fuzzy match. On August 7 last year, this cluster came up. The FQDNs in this cluster look like this. In the following few days, we noticed that the infected clients of this cluster started to query a whole bunch of different new domains every day. The list of domains are not the same each day, but the domains they ask for share similar pattern. So it may be a TDD DJ. Look at the domains in this cluster. We can extract some features. They have seven top level domains ORG, RU, CN, NET, and so on. And the SLD is always 16. And SLD consists of the letter A to Z and the number zero to nine. Then, based on these features, we search the sandbox DNS MD5 pairs database, found that some domains share, with, share very similar features, and they are generated by a single sample. Through Google search, we found the malware bias blog. They have analyzed this sample and named it China D. But the article did not mention anything about the DGA. So we create a new DGA family and named it China D. Recap. We start from the suspicious DJ cluster, then figuring our naming pattern and locate suspicious MD5 through fuzzy match, and then do worse engineering and figure out the algorithm. Then we can confidently generate domains of this new family. Thank you.
Yeah, I think we're running out, out of time for the last section, but uh, good thing is the uh, last section is pretty simple and uh, easy to understand. You guys can just read the deck, but I do want to see one more thing uh, here. Oops. Oops. Uh, right now we have this GitHub repository. So um, on this repository, repository uh, we have suspicious DJ domains without uh, MD5s. We also have uh, some MD5s. We haven't uh, figured out the algorithm yet. And also we keep a list of benign DJ applications, which means the application is not bad, but they just have this DJ active, uh, behavior. So for security researchers, you're more than welcome to go take a look. And if you can make contributions, that's gonna be great. Uh, with that, uh, any questions? Kevin Bloomberg. Um, a lot of the work you've done um, points to an interesting way of, of identifying that's reproducible. Um, it takes you time to figure out the next one, but you're, you seem to be re reproducing the, the way they are generating the, the domains consistently. Is this something that the registries and registrars should be uh, using in their algorithms for fraud and, and detection? Um, and is that something that you're working towards? Um, or you're looking at a higher level, you just expect these will be created and other people are then gonna use them. Should it be stopped at the root? I don't mean the roots, but at the root cause rather than um, after the fact. Right, uh, as, I, as we mentioned before, right now our focus is mainly on producing the data. Mm. Uh, we have more than like, a, we have uh, people from more than 50 countries pulling the data. Uh, we don't, right now our focus is just mainly producing the data, but we haven't worked with any registrar to do anything yet. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay then, thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you.